What's up, Knife World? This is Ryan from Knife Pivot Loop here today on a beautiful spring morning. What have I got in my pocket? Well, today I'm carrying an automatic or switchblade if you prefer. This is the ProTech Newport. This one comes in S35 VN blade steel with a diamond like carbon coating on the blade, which gives it that nice matte black color. I don't know if you guys are familiar with ProTech, but they make just extremely refined um, switchblade knives. That's their specialty. They say nothing hits like a ProTech, and these things are just as snappy as can be. They are a great EDC knife and just a great fidget tool as well. Love this guy. He may come back out during the video to help us, but I'll put him away for now. As a backup knife, and we're gonna talk about backup knives today, I've got a Northwoods Knives. This is one of their Fremont Jacks in stabilized kudu bone, also a great knife. But I'm avoiding our topic today, which is the enemies of every pocket knife. That's right, we're talking about the top 10 most wanted enemies of every EDC knife carrier in the world, starting with number one, which is hard objects. And to demonstrate here, I've got a dinner plate. You may ask, why is a dinner plate so damaging to a pocket knife? Well, probably more edges have been ruined on simple dinner plates than on any other object. What we tend to do when we get excited about using our new pocket knife is we pull it out to help us eat our meal. We've got a nice beautiful steak on this plate. We get our fork out and our nice sharp knife and we cut that steak. And as we do so, the edge of this blade touches that glass surface of the plate. Unfortunately, the steel in our knives is much, much softer than the glass or ceramic in our plates. In fact, that is the case probably by an order of magnitude. It is the steel matrix itself that is soft and that tends to deform when it touches on something like a plate. I've got a demonstration of this that I'm gonna show right here. This is a knife of my own that I accidentally touched against a plate as I was cutting a piece of steak for my daughter. And boom, you can see where that edge has just flattened right out and rolled over. This is a knife made in crew wear, which should have stayed sharp for thousands and thousands of cuts. But with one cut, I destroyed that edge and took away all the sharpness that it had. You gotta be really careful around hard objects. If you are cutting something against the ground, when you cut through an object, like say a piece of cardboard that ordinarily would not be very damaging, and then into the dirt, your knife edge can collide against rocks in the soil and flatten out that edge just as easily as a plate can. This can also happen if you're cutting something next to a hard object. I've done it before on things like cast iron pipes, which are also hard enough to roll an edge or chip an edge on a pocket knife. I'm looking here at the edge of a blade that collided with an object behind it as I was cutting and look at that damage done to what was previously a very sharp edge. That collision caused, it looks like a little bit of micro fracturing and cracking as well as quite a lot of rolling. That's serious damage to your edge. This collision actually happened while I was cutting a zip tie. Zip ties are infamous for causing knife problems. But as I was cutting that zip tie, the knife made its cut, slipped and banged into the pipe that the zip tie was secured around, leaving this damage right here. If you've got to cut something against a hard edge, use a dedicated kitchen knife or an exacto blade that you can dispose of. All right, next on our enemies list is prying forces, lateral forces. When knife makers design blades, they design them to be incredibly strong in the direction that they are cutting. That is parallel to the blade, just like this in the vertical direction. These blades are very thin in the transverse direction. That's force being placed on the side of the knife and are particularly weak near the tip of the knife where there's even less material. How does this come into play? Well, I know we're all tempted on occasion to use these knives as prying tools. That's right, we'll wedge them right underneath something and try to pop it up using our knives, thinking we can get away with it just this once. Or there's a screw we need to remove and we just don't have a screwdriver that fits or a screwdriver at all. And we decide to wedge our pocket knife tip into that screw and turn it. Almost invariably, this is going to lead to disaster. To demonstrate here, I've got a Delica that had this exact type of damage done to it. A little bit of twisting lateral force and snap, gone. The blade is not only broken, it's actually got a little bit of a twist to it. I don't see myself being able to rescue this thing without losing a heck of a lot of blade length. Make sure that if you've got something to pry or twist, you've got the right tool for it. There are all kinds of makers these days that make beautiful pry bars 
that are a pleasure to carry in either titanium or hardened steel. Some of them even come with bit drivers so that you have a screwdriver with you whenever the temptation comes up to remove a screw. And while we're on the topic of blade damage, the number three enemy of our knife blades is our friends and neighbors. That's right, the knife muggles. Hmm? You guys get to play with knives? Oh, cool, a spark. Don't hurt me. These are people who may be picking up a knife on a very rare occasion, but they're at work with you and they ask you, hey, can I borrow your knife for a second? Ooh, beware, danger. Those people tend to take your beautiful knife, such as something like this Protec here, and use it as their personal pry bar. Or they decide to cut something that is just not made for cutting with a pocket knife. These are people using knives as tin snips, screwdrivers, and your knife almost invariably is going to come back damaged severely. I've got a picture that I'm gonna show here of somebody who loaned his knife to a friend and the knife came back with a tip missing. How do you solve this problem? Carry a backup knife. Carry a knife that's inexpensive and easy to replace that you can hand to a friend that they can use. If they do some damage to it, eh, it's maybe $18 out of your pocket to replace it. Me personally, I carry a Swiss Army knife for this purpose. I really like the Cadet, which tends to be kind of the perfect non-threatening size. You can hand it to anyone, it includes a couple of tools so that they can get the job done without damaging the blade. And if something goes wrong, you're out of pocket a few bucks. All right, what's enemy number four? We're talking about abrasives. These are the enemy of your knife's edge because they do a ton of damage very rapidly to it. If you've got something like sandpaper at the workplace, you're not gonna wanna cut this to shape with your beautiful new pocket knife because these abrasive grains are going to collide with that edge and leave microscopic wear in the edge of that blade, leaving it much duller than it started. A knife that should be able to handle thousands of cuts might only make 10 or 15 on something like sandpaper before its edge is just gone and requires resharpening. Also, cardboard. You wouldn't think that this would be very hard on a knife blade. After all, it's just wood, which knives are great at cutting through but cardboard contains tons of contaminants. They take this stuff from the garbage can, basically. Most of it is recycled. Lots of rocks and dirt and pieces of abrasive get thrown in here. You don't know what's in the cardboard that you're cutting. And if you're going to be cutting it with your knife, you're gonna lose that edge much more quickly than if you were using this knife to cut something else. Now, if you are a person who uses your knife to cut cardboard on a daily basis, try and pick up a steel that's very abrasion resistant. We've got lots of great options today among the super steels. Something like M390 or CPM M4 is going to do much better than a simple steel like OS8 or 8CR13. Anyway, just be aware that if you are going to be cutting cardboard, your edge is probably not gonna last as long as it otherwise would. All right, next up on our list of knife enemies is moisture and electrolytes. These together with steel, cause rusting to occur. This is a Schrad old timer that I picked up. This has suffered severe damage from sweat that got on the blade steel while it was in someone's pocket, leaving this terrible corrosion and pitting on the blade of the knife. We can see looking at the blade under a microscope, how much pitting is in the blade of the knife and how much damage is done as this rust sets itself into the blade, flakes off and exposes even more metal. Now, how does rusting occur? It's actually an interesting process. Moisture in the air acts as a catalyst when it encounters the iron in steels. Water, all on its own, can get into microscopic crevices in the surface of the iron, and there it can disassociate it, its hydrogen atom. That hydrogen atom can combine with chemicals on the surface of the steel, creating acidic conditions that then eat away at the knife, exposing even more steel, and allowing this, the iron to combine with water to create rust. That rust actually takes up much more space than does the steel that it's made from, which leads to flaking off and exposing more and more surface. Now, if we've got salt in the water on our knives, we also get electrolytic corrosion or galvanic corrosion, where that salt water can actually set up a tiny battery on the surface of the steel that leads to something akin to the opposite of electroplating. You're actually removing steel from the surface due to electrochemical action, which really rapidly accelerates the rusting that's gonna occur on your knife. You'll see this very often around the ocean where metals are exposed to salt water on a regular basis and they simply fall apart very, very rapidly. 
Now, many of our blade steels today are designed to be stainless. They incorporate a lot of chromium, which leaves a coating of chromium oxide on the surface of the steel. But even these very stainless steels are susceptible to rusting. It's something that you do need to watch out for, particularly if you're carrying these in your pocket every day, or if you live in a humid environment or near the ocean. Our recommendation for preventing rust is to give your knife blades a simple wipe down on a regular basis with an oil. Knife pivot lube here is a great option. This oil both blocks moisture from touching the surface of the steel by creating an impervious and waterproof layer. And because it incorporates corrosion inhibitors, it actually acts chemically to prevent oxygen from combining with the iron and the steel and actually bonds to the steel itself, leaving basically a microscopic umbrella over the surface, which does prevent rust very, very effectively. Once you've added that to your knife, you can just go ahead and wipe it down with a clean rag, leaving a very thin coating. That'll help prevent that corrosion from setting in on your knife blades. All right, we're getting close to the end of our list here. We're talking next about the enemy to knives, which is friction. That's right, each and every time you open your knife blade, friction is causing wear to occur between the parts of your knife. Eventually that friction will cause your knife to break down, loosen up, lose tolerance, and not be the knife that you remember it as when you purchased it. How do you avoid that? It's simple. We've talked about this lots of times on the channel. You want to use a high quality knife oil, which prevents those metal parts from touching each other each and every time the knife is opened and closed. A simple drop of knife pivot lube along each side of the blade on a regular basis will prevent these metal parts from touching each other as the knife opens and closes. That knife pivot lube will leave a boundary layer between those parts, which allows them both to operate very smoothly and to operate without grinding against each other, causing damage to the blade. All right, the last and final enemy of every knife owner, this is number eight on our list, and it is loss of your knives. Everyone hates it, everyone's had it happen, but knives get lost on a regular basis. What's the solution to this? Well, there's nothing I can do for your knife falling out of your pocket, but when you are storing them at home, get a knife storage case. This is a Pelican case, comes with a foam insert, I've torn out these little holes where you can slip your knives in and out of. It keeps track of them. It keeps them in a dry and safe space where they're not going to rust or get damaged. I can seal this up and it keeps moisture out. It's the perfect vault for keeping your knives all in one place so that they're not getting lost on a regular basis. Plus, these things make a great spot for adding your sticker collection. Now there are lots of options available for these kinds of cases. You can pick up one that has got a custom insert built just for knives. Now Pack is the place that I recommend for those types of cases. I've included a link down below where you can take a look at those. Or if you're like me, you can buy a simple Pelican case with the pick and pluck foam inserts and design your own knife compartments that are fitted specifically to your collection. And that's it, that's a wrap. That's the list of the top enemies of your pocket knife. I hope you guys have learned something today about how to protect your knives from the everyday objects that want to ruin them for you. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Make sure that you get notifications each time I release a new video, which I do weekly. Thanks for joining me, everyone. This is Ryan from Knife Pivot Loop, signing off.